Henry's back in an all-new series of Amazing Animals. Hit it, Ma! Amazing Animals, available now on video. Watch out for the upcoming range of Amazing Animals book and interactive learning titles. Welcome to the world of Amazing Animal Flight. Welcome aboard! Right this way! Glad you could make it! Thanks, Henry. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Have you thought of a name for your new airline yet? Yep! It's called Lizard Air! The Amazing Animal Airline! First class ladies, right up front. They're VIPs. Very important pussycats. Any more carry-on luggage? Traveling alone? Or is there someone in your pouch? Stinking sections in the back. You. Welcome to Lizard Air. Cat flaps are located there, there, and there. Please make sure all poisonous snakes are stored in the overhead compartments. In the unlikely event you're a turkey, your seat can be used as a nesting device. I hope you enjoy your flight on Lizard Air, the only way to travel. Now, please pay attention to the following safety demonstration. Oops. Hmm, I think maybe you could learn a thing or two by watching this, Henry. Question one, what is flying? Going here to there in the air. But sometimes that's just jumping. Okay, flying is what birds do. But have you ever heard of a flying frog who can glide 50 meters on its big webbed feet? That's what I call hip-hop. But it's not really flying. This flying squirrel maybe should have been called the gliding squirrel. Gliding isn't like real flying, because they have to keep stopping. There are all sorts of ways to take to the air. Whether it's floating on the breeze or flying south for the winter, air travel is an amazing adaptation animals use for survival. Plants, too. Some trees even make seeds with wings. Just because you've got wings doesn't mean you can fly. Look at that ostrich. The only flying he's going to do is on a 747. Flying's much easier when you're light and small. Insects were the first animals ever to wing it. Being able to fly is a great way to escape your enemies or to get a bird's eye view when looking for something you need. Like your teddy bear. Like your dinner or a place to nest or a mate. I don't see any volunteers. Thanks to the huge numbers of insects around, there are more animals alive that can fly than can't. That's amazing! Don't tell me you're the pilot, too. Somebody's got to fly this thing. Now, how do you turn it on? Uh-oh. You better make sure all your equipment is in working order before takeoff. Roger! Aye, aye! And check! Hmm. Visibility! Check! Wings! Check! Ready for takeoff! Wait! What about your landing gear? Got it right here. Everything I need for landing. Shorts, sunglasses... 
Flaps! Flapping! Uh, wiggle this. Twiggle that. Pull one of these. Eeny, meeny, miny. Careful! Henry! Watch out! Here we go! You don't know the first thing about aerodynamics, do you, Henry? Of course I do! It's that exercise Mom does to music. That's aerobics. Aerodynamics is the science of moving through air. It tells us exactly how long an animal's wings need to be and how quickly they need to move them. Roger Wilco, Dung Beetle! Prepare flying apparatus! Extend wings! Right! Left! Commence flapping! You're clear for takeoff! Insects have to spend a lot of energy flying due to the weight of their outer skeleton. Birds have it easy, relatively speaking. I didn't know you had birds for relatives. I mean they have their skeletons on the inside, and their bones are light. Some are even hollow, making it easier for them to get off the ground. And stay up there! Because insects are heavy for their size, they have to keep those wings beating at a very high rate all the time. It's still not getting him very far. That's because he's hovering. This bird is soaring. Hey, no snoring on the job. Not snoring, soaring. Flight without flapping. See how this black kite uses its tail feathers to steer. I do that with my plane's rudder. Us pilots have to be in complete control all the time. The experts can even refuel or take on cargo without landing. I could do that. But I don't think all my passengers are having the fish. Landing is tricky too. A soft landing takes agility and precise control, especially for a large bird. This condor needs to slow down gradually for a safe descent. Control tower to condor. Steady as she goes. Control tower to swan. Pond one, clear for landing. Or maybe I should say watering. Soft landings aren't quite as soft on the ground. In the same way that there are different kinds of aircraft, each species of flying animal is adapted to the kind of flying and landing it needs to do. Like aircraft, animals need regular maintenance. Clean feathers are light feathers and the most efficient for in-flight maneuvers, which means a good wash for these turns. At least for the bathtub that size, no one has to wait their turn, do they? Very funny. are asked please not to eat each other. I'll be bringing around a selection of tasty snacks shortly. Henry, if you're out here, who's flying the plane in there? Oh, don't worry. I put her on autopilot. Lucky we had an otter on board. Uh, uh, uh. something, Henry, and quick! Oh, sorry, buddy. You haven't had enough lessons yet. It took me a whole day to learn how to fly this thing. Uh, sorry about the disturbance, passengers. We had a beginner at the control. All right, Otter. Back to your seat. Don't be too rough on him, Henry. Even the experts have to face a steep learning curve. Curve? That's more like a learning cliff. Cliffs are safe nesting places for guillemots, but their food all comes from the sea below. So it's a long way down for your fish supper. Right. 
Mum and Dad Guillemot would rather not spend energy carrying fish all the way back to their chicks. So today is flying lessons for the young Guillemots. Mm, I'd rather take the stairs. This chick is warmed up and ready to go. There's his dad going. All right, son, ready. Go for it. Help, I'm falling. Use the wings, son, the wings. How's this? That's it, son, you got it. Once the Guillemot chick has made his first flight, he'll spend several weeks floating at sea before his wings are developed enough to take off again. But first, he's got to learn how to land. Ouch! Ouch! Eek! Splash down! That's one Guillemot safely at sea. But this little guy's been separated from his father. And his flying instructor. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. The Guillemot seems to have escaped any serious injury. Its main problem now is how to get out to sea and join its father. I know! Row, row, Guillemot, gently down the stream! Whee! This is fun! Where did he go? Last one on the beach is a rotten shorebird! Ta-da! I made it! Where are you? Guillemot fathers do all the babysitting for their children's first few weeks at sea. And even in a big, noisy colony, a father can recognize his child's cry. Yeah! Daddy, buy me an ice cream! With herring sauce on top. <laughs> Henry, Henry, it's time for your report on flying mammals. What? Now? Yes, now. Out of my way! Journal lizard coming through! develops winking problem. And Caterpillar learns to chuck cha 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 But now our top story. Hipsters confirm twisted tales of Cuddles the Flying Mouse. Amazingly, born with the wings of a wasp and the lips of a love god, Cuddles flew around the world planting great big smoocheroonies throughout the animal queendom, making felines faint, chickens cheer, and blowfish blush. Cuddles hung up his wings after falling in love with Gloria, the hug-hungry gorilla. After a smooch-tastic honeymoon in Hawaii, they bought a motorhome, a ton of bananas, and drove off sweetly into the sunset. You think they bought it? You couldn't even give it away, Henry. Rats. I think you'll find, Henry, there's only one true kind of flying mammal. What's that big-eared thing? Well, it's just one of the many types of... Wait, let me guess. Is it furry? Yes. Does it rhyme with cat? Yes. Is it a rat on a hang glider? Henry. Just kidding. They're bats. That's right. And bats are truly amazing. There are hundreds of species. Most never touch the ground their whole lives. They hang upside down and fly mainly at night. With a face like that, I can see why. If you look at a bat skeleton, through the wonders of X-ray vision! You can see how their wings have developed from what used to be a normal animal paw. The fingers got longer and covered in leathery skin, giving bats the power of flight. As if by magic. Another great trick is the bat's ability to get around in the dark. They rely on their ears more than their eyes, which gives them access to the night kitchen when it's time to eat. There are bats that fish, 
That's amazing! Bats that drink nectar from flowers. That's incredible! In fact, many plant species couldn't reproduce without bats. Just one bat can scatter 60,000 seeds in a single night through their droppings. That's... ooh, charming. Insect-feeding bats even help control pests like mosquitoes. In Austin, Texas, a colony of over one million bats lives under a single bridge. Once feared by people, bats here have now become a tourist attraction. Cool! So it's hats off to bats! Unless there's one hanging right above you, that is. Okay, uh, this is the stick shift. Ooh, these were the flaps. And I don't know what this is yet. That's navigation equipment. Don't you at least have a navigator? An alligator? They sit in the tail section. No, navigator. Somebody has to keep track of where we are. Don't be ridiculous. We're in the sky. But Henry, where are we going? Let's have a look. The fish have tickets to Finland, cats to Kathmandu, polar bears to the... Uh-oh. I knew I should have taken that right at Albuquerque. You'd better ask for directions, Henry. Yeah. Excuse me! Can you tell me? Where are we going? Ooh, what does that mean? Ah, it means into that mountain. Huh? Thank goodness for air brakes. Now, where are we going? Um, the wrong way. Maybe you can get your bearings off these geese. They fly thousands of miles each year and never get lost. So what's their secret? Well, they can read their position from the path of the sun or familiar landmarks. Night flyers read the moon and star patterns in the sky, and many are highly sensitive to the Earth's magnetic field to tell them where they are, like a kind of built-in compass. They must go to goose school for years. Amazingly, they're born with these skills. Well, if they went to school, they might learn some letters besides V. Actually, Henry, the V formation makes flying easier. Each goose breaks the air for the bird behind. Excuse me, but if a goose was breaking wind in front of me, I wouldn't follow that close, would you? Well, it can save the geese up to 20% of their energy. And their survival depends on their ability to keep up with the others and to return to the same breeding grounds every year. The same is true for monarch butterflies. Every winter they leave Mexico, heading north again to feed. Don't they like Mexican food? Afraid not. These little flyers travel thousands of miles for just one plant, milkweed. I'd walk a mile for a pizza, but that's ridiculous. It takes several monarch generations to make the journey. The grandchildren finish the trip their grandparents started. No individual makes the whole journey alive. So how do they know where they're going? It's a mystery, Henry. Nobody knows. Hmm, maybe those wings are really road maps. <sighs> yes. And now, ladies and gentle lizards, it's time for Henry's amazing Golden Gecko Awards. The winners of my all-time best amazing animal flyer are... In third place, for taking a long hop off a short ledge at a young age, the Gillamat. In second place, for knowing the way to San Jose and just about everywhere else, the Canada Goose. But tonight's Golden Gecko Award for the most amazing animal flyer goes to... Thummingbird! They're the smallest birds on Earth and lay the smallest eggs. They have the fastest wing beat and heartbeat of any bird. For their weight, they burn more energy flying than a jet fighter. They inhabit every continent on the planet, except for Antarctica and sport a wild range of colors and styles. Isn't that a lovely little green number he's sporting today? 
But where the hummingbird really shines is in the flying sweepstakes. Of all the birds on Earth, only the hummingbird can fly backwards, forwards, and hover on the spot. Which makes life a lot easier for our cameraman, let me tell you. And talk about your picky eaters. They mainly live on a diet of sweet flower nectar. And they've come up with some cool ways to get that nectar down their necks. Hummingbirds have long beaks and tongues shaped like drinking straws for those quick slurps on the go. A human would have to eat about 200 chocolate bars a day to get the same amount of energy. Hmm, I think I could handle that. So here's tonight's golden gecko winner taking a moment out to pamper itself in the bath. What? That's it? You didn't even wash behind your ears! Nothing like a bit of free advertising. Yes, but do you know where we're going yet, Henry? Mm, no, but I'm really getting the hang of this flying thing. Let's see what this baby can do. Anything birds can do, I can do better. Henry, the passengers won't like this. They love it. Think of the fish tanks. How about a bit of barnstorming? No, bad idea. Hey, hey! Was fun. I don't think your passengers agree. What? Come back! Somebody shut the door! I was just doing a bit of in-flight entertainment! I told you to leave the aerial acrobatics to the experts, Henry. Like this stunt pilot, the booby. Is that his real name or did you just make it up? I'm not kidding. It's one of the great dive bombers of all time. 9.2 for form and no splash. But where's the fish? Already swallowed. Fish with no chips? What a waste. In the mating season, boobies come together from far and wide. It's like my local pool in there. All right, no rough housing and no running on the side. Just don't say no diving. That's what these birds do best. But this bird means bad news for boobies. No, is this a booby trap? It's called the frigate bird, the pirate of the high seas. Pirates, ahoy me hearties! Pirates, ahoy! The frigate's plan is to harass the poor booby until it spits up the dinner in its gullet. Divast, far she blows! The frigate bird wins. But that's what I call the booby prize. <laughs> Moving swiftly along, in Texas, there's a colony of some 30 million cave-dwelling bats, and they all come out at twilight. Excuse me, but that's amazing! Yeah, and it's like a bat buffet for one stunt-flying hunter. Hawk alert! A red-tailed hawk, to be precise. Well, if he doesn't catch one, I'll eat my bat. It's not as easy as you'd think, Henry. Oh, nearly! Thanks to their radar and quick reflexes, the bats are as good at escaping as the hawk is at hunting. The hawk dives to pick up speed. This wily hunter has to use every trick in the book. Which book? 30 million ways to catch a bat? There, did you see? He got one. Welcome to Batville, Texas, population 30 million. Yeah. Oops, make that 29,999,900. Uh, yes, thank you, Henry. <laughs> I haven't spotted any new customers yet. Wait a minute. Hey, wildebeesties! Hi there! Want a left? Careful, Henry. You're flying too low. Watch out for those... <gasps> trees! Oh, all aboard. Sorry to tell you this, but I think we've lost our wings. What? So what are you going to do now? If at first you don't succeed, you can always take the bus. Go lizard lines! There's so much more to see on the ground. And you can leave the air travel to the real amazing flying animals. Those, please!